Indrag Manis is a Title VIII research scholar with the Wilson Center's Kennan Institute, where she's focusing on cultural identity in the Baltics, particularly looking at Russian language speaking populations. Indra, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, John. Let me, let's do a little geography review first for people. We're talking about three countries, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, that comprise the so-called Baltics. Is there a common Baltic identity? That's a good question, and that's been up for debate, actually, <laughs> and under um, in a lot of different scholarly debates as well. So um, the Baltic identity is a little bit um, uh, nuanced. Uh, Latvia Lith and Lithuania share a common Baltic language uh, family tree, while um, Estonia and Latvia have um, a very similar uh, history and um, kind of uh, political structures, uh, and demographic structures as well. And the Russian-speaking population, what percentage overall is that? In Latvia and Estonia, it's around 30% of the population. So significant. Significant. In, in Lithuania, a little bit less, around 9%. So is, is national identity, does it tend to be uh, a Russian or, or a European? Is, is there something that is dominant or is there a bit of a, a, a hodgepodge? It's a bit of a hodgepodge and for multiple reasons. Um, the Baltics in general have been pretty quick to jump onto the European train. Um, they were very fast to join the European Union, join NATO, uh, these kind of transatlantic and um, trans-European structures that pushed them towards the West very quickly after the Soviet Union um, collapsed in 1991. This was really important, um, not only for ethnic Latvians, Lithuanians, and Estonians, but also for the Russian-speaking populations that were there who kind of saw their identities more tied to futures in the West um, than perhaps looking back towards um, uh, Russia as a kin state. Um, in terms of national identities, uh, the Baltics are pretty, uh, embra have embraced very much their, their national um, cultural identities. Uh, Latvia, perhaps in particular, mostly because it doesn't have any uh, other sort of regional partners to tie, mm -hmm. tie to. Finland uh, is a close neighbor of Estonia. Uh, Poland, Lithuania have long-standing history as well, but Latvia has, uh, has kind of been standing alone for a long time. And, and so the Latvian cultural identity ha has been a real uh, part of the way that that country has developed. So is Russia the default setting in that regard based on just sort of a Soviet hangover? Oh, absolutely not. Um, Russia has actually been the kind of con contrast to the Baltic identities in a lot of ways, which has caused some problems with their Russian-speaking populations um, who have alternatively felt um, uh, disenfranchised. Um, and this is a big problem that, that the Baltics have sought to remedy over the past 25 years of independence. And how, how what are they seeking to remedy that? They are trying to integrate their, their Russian-speaking populations uh, without assimilating them. And uh, this is something that kind of, uh, this is a nuance that kind of goes overlooked um, in a lot of the policy discourse about the Baltics um, and Russian speakers in the Baltics. Because um, Russian speakers in the Baltics are not necessarily Russian, they're not ethnically uh, Baltic, but uh, they have this kind of um, uh, intermediate identity. and. Uh, in Latvia, for example, uh, trying to integrate that population has been done through a variety of um, language learning uh, initiatives, um, working uh, to incorporate Russian cultural heritage into kind of the public sphere while also promoting Latvian heritage as well. Uh, so there are multiple uh, methods of trying to integrate that population without either assimilating it or pushing them kind of uh, into a separatist uh, or you know, separate yeah. sphere. It's, it sounds tricky. How do you thread that needle? Is it working? Well, a lot of the debates <laughs> on integration in the Baltics would say that, no, there, there, there are still a lot of problems. And I would say that there are a lot of problems, definitely. Um, but there are also a lot of solutions and a lot of um, pro, uh, proactive and pro-integration uh, things that are happening and that are working in the Baltics. And a lot of that can be seen um, among the youth. For example, um, I spent a lot of time in Latgale, which is the easternmost region of Latvia. It's the most Russian-speaking region, um, and it has the second largest city in Latvia, Dolgopils. And I spoke to some students there who go to a Polish high school, for example. And I talked to them and I said, well, how do, how do, you, how do you feel? Like, mm -hmm. wh what does it mean to you to, to have these multiple identities? And they said, oh, it's really simple. We're Polish Latvians. We s live in a Russian-speaking city, so of course we speak Polish, Latvian, and Russian. It's it's not a problem, and you see that attitude more and more um, developing among youth, uh, particularly in the kind of rural regions of Latvia. So that generational breakdown is the best dividing line to understand this. Uh, the generational breakdown is really, really important, certainly, um, and it is a great dividing line to to, yeah. <laughs> to understand. 
There's a, uh, Russian meddling is obviously a topic in the United States based on the election, but there's been all kinds of meddling. And, and when you look at the invasion of Ukraine, uh, are there concerns in the Baltics about Russia's intentions? We have concerns at different levels. And certainly the Baltics became really popular in um, American media uh, as the, you know, what's next um, for yeah. Russia. Um, and I would argue that actually perhaps the Baltics are not, not next. And it's not only because, um, because Russia maybe does not necessarily want to invade territorially these, uh, these states, but also because the population on the ground um, may have uh, some sort of allegiance culturally to Russia, may watch Russian television, but they're also very aware that they're being, um, that there are these kind of manipulating forces out there. And there's not such a sense of um, a consolidated or a coalesced Russian-speaking identity that would seek to kind of overthrow the governments they're, they're in. They like democracy, they like economic freedoms, they like being part of the West. Th so what is their, uh, their uh, geopolitical relationship with Russia? Uh, the Baltic states? Yes. The Baltic states have kind of this fraught um, relationship. They are very intrinsically tied to the European Union and NATO, and so they kind of break on that line. They have a lot of economic ties to Russia, though, and so sanctions have um, not only hit Russians, but uh, have, have also hit kind of the Baltic states a little bit, bit more, more harshly. Is the energy sector reliant on? The energy sector on? is incredibly reliant on Russia. Um, they are moving progressively towards connecting to Sweden and to Finland, um, as well as to uh, create national or liquid uh, natural gas terminals in Li Lithuania, for example. Well, you mentioned separatist movements, and we've seen Catalan and, and other places, Catalonia, mm -hmm. other places. Uh, wh what is the tr what are the trend lines saying? We see Brexit. You know, we see contradictory data. You, you talk about a, a, a early embrace of the EU and that new identity. What do the trend lines tell you in the Baltics? Well, there's a interesting connection between Catalonia and the Baltics in that um, the song of the Catalonian kind of resistance movement is a Latvian tune, actually. But I would say that that's about as far as that relationship goes um, in terms of trends, because the Baltics they cannot sustain uh, breaking down even into even smaller entities. Latvia, for example, has just under two million people. Estonia, about one and a half million. Mm -hmm. So there's not really room to break down those those uh, countries anymore. And there's also not any sentiment or, or really direct will that, that would seek that kind of separation. I'm, I'm, you're painting a picture of a fairly successful approach to managing cultural diversity. Yes, for in the long term and in the kind of bigger picture, certainly there are obviously a lot of problems that remain kind of at a minute level. Structural problems, for example, neighborhood segregation is, is a, a big area of concern. Uh, educational diversity and, and minority education programs versus mainstream education programs mm -hmm. still ma maintain kind of these structural divisions. But on the, uh, on the bigger picture, in the bigger picture, I would say that the Baltics are a huge case of success that's often kind of overlooked because they have these catchy narratives um, you know, that can tie to this idea of, of Russian expansionism or irredentism. But on a daily, daily level, when you look at the people on the ground and you look at the kids in the schools, um, they, they don't find such a, a big contrast with their identities. A lot of them themselves have multiple ethnic backgrounds. They speak multiple languages, and and that's it's just thing. their world. That's it's just natural. their world. That's their daily the, the, life. Can you come away, Indra, with a, a list of sort of best practices or recommendations or things that are working in the Baltics that can work in other diverse situations where there may be some tension uh, based on cultural identity? I think that a big um, aspect of that is to not focus so much on necessarily specific points of fissures or specific points of successes in the national media or in the in the political sphere um, because that's what draws all the attention away from things that are actually working so things that are actually working are civic associational groups for example uh, people in small communities coming together to sing songs to dance uh, to participate in kind of local potlucks or things like that so these small civic associational life civic groups are really important something like Putnam's bowling alone if you will uh, another thing is economic development and make sh making sure that these populations are being served economically. That's something mm -hmm. that the Baltics are still working on, um, but that is a, another key area that will solidify that integration. So is there a final form for your research? Is there a, a book in your future? There is a book in my future, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, um, and it will be looking kind of at the 
uh, literary, to take the, the cultural aspect of it, uh, looking at the, the way that children um, are integrating through uh, cultural folk dance groups, through choirs, um, through things like this, and, and how that's uh, being making them part of the, the larger nation. So. Well, good luck with that. We'll look forward to it, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.